the, the Columbia accident, there was a decision that the shuttle needed to be retired. It needed to be replaced with a vehicle that was less expensive to uh, operate and maintain, and one that was a lot safer. And, oh, by the way, it needed to have the capability to go beyond low Earth orbit, which the shuttle didn't. Because if we really are going to be serious about exploration, we need to do that. So this vision for space exploration was provided. Uh, the result of that was uh, a, a decision to form Constellation, the program that had all of the elements necessary to do uh, the missions that we were laying out, both from a, from a launch vehicle perspective, a, a spacecraft perspective, and from a land perspective. So all of the elements were under uh, program Constellation. Part of it was a launch vehicle called Ares-1, and uh, part of it was a, a launch vehicle called Ares-5. Uh, Ares-1 would launch the spacecraft to contain the people. Ares-5 would launch the uh, spacecraft that contained the lander and the, and the upper stage necessary to get to the moon and back. Uh, so that program was going along until the change of administration. Uh, changed the, the new president decided to review this program, decided it was uh, uh, over cost and behind schedule, which uh, uh, to most of us involved in the program was not a big surprise. Uh, if if uh, you lay out a program that, that costs X and you're funded Y, chances are you're not going to stay on schedule. So that's where we were. The decision was to reevaluate where we were going to go and how we were going to do that. Uh, that new program has just recently been announced. You probably heard the decision to, to uh, do exploration using something called now a multi-purpose crew vehicle. It will have shuttle-based derived solid rocket boosters to start. It will have a, a tank that was, was evolved from what the shuttle used. It will use, use shuttle engines on the back. And it will use some, some derived uh, rocket engines from, from what we were planning to do on the, on the upper stage. Uh, the difference is, is that it will be more of a, we'll start small and, and build and evolve up. There will be a decision on whether we stick with solid rocket boosters or we go to a liquid booster. Uh, there will be some decision about stretching that tank and getting different engines that give you greater capability to go to different places. But the, the, the important part is that we've made the decision that we're, we're committed to doing exploration and we're going to start ourselves on that path. And that's the, to me, the, the thing which makes the most uh, sense about this is that we've, we've taken advantage of what we've learned from shuttle. We've taken advantage of what we've developed already under program constellation. We've now applied it to this new program. Uh, there, there was a, a, a initial uh, great desire to wait until we, we developed all new technology. Uh, rather than go, as I said, with the Russians, the way they did things in an evolutionary path, rather than do that, we were going to do nothing until we looked and applied all new technology. And once the technology was, was developed, was refined, and was ready to be implemented, then we would decide what the design would be. Um, the problem with that is it takes an awful lot of money and an awful lot of time, and there's no real promise that you're ever going to go anywhere or do anything. So we've kind of reversed that a little bit to the point where we are using existing technology. We are using things that we've done a lot of work with on making that better uh, than what we have ever had on shuttle in terms of safety, reliability, and cost. And we've applied that now to this new program with another path that says, okay, as technology does develop, we do want to not just you know, rely on old stuff. We don't want to just rely on the stuff that we developed 30 years ago do want to develop technology and, and implement it. And so when that's available, there is a sort of on-ramp to be able to implement that into uh, the existing vehicle. But the question is really, you know, what's our next step? Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? Uh, there's been a lot of speculation about uh, whether we should go to the moon, whether we should go to an asteroid, whether we should just skip all that and go to Mars. Uh, I think a lot of that is still being discussed. But it's really, every one of those missions has a, has a particular uh, value and a particular challenge to us that we, we would benefit from. And so uh, as time goes on, I think we'll see that more refined. Uh, but right now, the, the real uh, thrust to me is a, is a mission where we're going to go and orbit the moon and look at uh, doing robotic exploration along with human uh, telerobotic operated kind of exploration, 
and then go to deeper out in space, go to the range points, go to an asteroid, someplace that we can really stretch ourselves well beyond what we've already done today, to, to date, uh, to be able to see what it takes to go out there and, and work out in deep space. And the, the legacy of what we've gained and what we've learned, uh, if we do it right, if we keep this uh, kind of focus in mind, I think we will, we will continue to reap the benefits of it. And so in this evolutionary path where we continue to keep the, uh, the experience base, the, the uh, knowledge base, the operational capability for uh, is, is really critical to be able to do that in a reasonable time frame. Uh, so the shuttle, you know, while it's dead and gone, uh, we, we, we love it, but at the same time, it was time for it to, uh, to move on. I think uh, we haven't really forgotten a lot about what we've gained from it and what we're going to apply from it. And you'll see a lot in the next uh, generation of spacecraft and, and programs that you'll see that, we, uh, that you'll, you'll recognize from what we uh, did under the show.